Thank you all. I'm delighted to be here and have a chance to uh, talk with you about special collections, uh, an area in which I've been working for over 40 years, and it never changes. I am sitting in this room thinking that it's a wonderful metaphor for what we do. Uh, it's a sp splendid room you know, that just sort of exudes the, 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 the memory of time and solidity and, and permanence. And outside the room, all this new technology is swirling and affecting us. But as long as we're here, it somehow or other seems a little bit far away. But I think that's, that's sometimes the challenge we have in special collections, uh, that we are, are a little bit uh, isolated in wonderful spaces. And there are lots of things swirling around us. Uh, I'm here uh, from the uh, Bentley Library at the University of Michigan, as, as Tim uh, mentioned. Um, just a brief sense of where I'm coming from. Uh, the Bentley Library really is four things. It's the Michigan Historical Collections. The state of Michigan has no state historical society that has collections. It has a state historical society, but it doesn't collect. It fell to the university in 1935 to assemble a collection of that dimension. So we are the equivalent of a state historical society in that regard. We're also the university archives. Uh, we have a separate division of uh, reference services. And two years ago, we established a fourth division, which is digital curation, to help deal with the uh, ingest of, of increasing uh, numbers of collections digital form. Again, as Tim said, we're independent of the university library and report directly to the provost. Um, we are at the University of Michigan. Because I'm going to be talking about university archives in a second, I do want to let you know that uh, it's, it's, it's a big place, which means it's a complicated archives, founded in 1817 with 19 schools and colleges, three campuses, 58,000 students across those three campuses, 8,500 instructional staff, and a budget of $5.5 billion. So that generates a lot of records, as you can, can imagine. Uh, the theme here is how can we best uh, uh, serve our institutional mission? And uh, I thought I'd focus on three things. One is to begin to think about, uh, rethink uh, the university archives. And second, to rethink a bit about what special collections are. And then the third, because I don't often have a, a chance to talk uh, to such an august group, uh, I'm going to share what I have as sort of a grander vision for what we might do uh, if we rethink uh, the first uh, two. Well, I'm struck, of course, as I said, by the changing environment. Uh, I was walking around New York the last uh, week or two, and. Uh, uh, mindful of the work that's being done with Google Books and how that's permeating the, the, the environment. I went into two bookshops uh, last week that now have espresso book machines and advertise that they can get in a moment any one of four million titles for you and print it out uh, in, a, in, a, in paperback form in uh, 10 minutes. I was walking, doing some work in the New York Public Library reading room yesterday, which all of you uh, uh, may know. Uh, used to be you'd get there late in the afternoon, and the lines were long looking for books. The, 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 the board would have all those numbers on both sides of the reading room. Uh, and and you know, it was just you always had to get there early. Uh, well, there I was in the afternoon. The reading room was packed, as always. But half the people uh, there, I did a kind of informal survey, were sitting at laptops with no books at all. Uh, from what I could gather, simply taking advantage of the free Wi-Fi. Uh, the lines uh, at the expecting books were way down from what they used to be, maybe 10 people. Um, so obviously, uh, things are changing in our, in our world. Uh, in terms of universities, uh, the whole production of records, the whole way archives are being produced is changing. Also, at the university, there's new philosophies of education out and about. Lisa mentioned this, the whole idea of, of engagement. Uh, that seems to be a real uh, a watchword now of, of engage, learn, engagement learning. No longer the sage on the stage, they tell us. It's going to be engagement learning, uh, working with things, working with people, experiential based. So, we are, uh, I think, uh, you know, in special collections in this, this rapidly changing uh, environment. So first, let's take a look at university archives. Uh, university archives uh, used to be collections of historical documents. That's how it started on our campus, uh, the great documents from 1817 on. 
Uh, in the 1970s, we moved towards a more formal records management operation to dig deeper into records production around the campus and, and, and be involved more in, in, in the, the, the administrative records of the, of the campus. Well, now in the last, uh, certainly in the last four years, uh, after thinking about it for many years, in the last four years, the onslaught of digital materials coming into the university archives is, is like a, the, an open floodgate. Uh, it's, um, uh, the graduate school now has told us they will no longer be sending us paper records. Uh, we cleaned out the records of the dean of the School of Public Health. Uh, uh, a few months ago, uh, there were two file drawers and uh, you know, a, a, a bunch of uh, digital, digital file transfers. So it's changing. And uh, this change in university archives, I think, is something we all need to be mindful of. Uh, there are changes in the whole inf uh, information structure of the university. The whole, I'm sure all of you at, at, at universities can recall those staff members who were there for years and years and years and kept records of the dean or records of the provost or records of this or that uh, uh, in, in, in wonderfully organized file drawers that ultimately uh, would transfer uh, to the university archives. That level of responsibility is, is very much changed and in many units almost non-existent. Uh, there are outdated or non-existent policies about the retention of records in digital form. Um, it's, it's, uh, chaos is probably too strong a word, but to say that uh, the record situation uh, at our universities is well under control, I think is probably uh, uh, overly optimistic. Uh, we have the pressure, certainly all universities have legal pressures, public universities have particular pressures from Freedom of Information Acts uh, that shape what records are retained and what are, are, are destroyed. We had a, uh, a, a little brochure that was circulated around the university uh, um, uh, at Michigan about six, seven years ago and put me into absolute apoplexy saying when you've read it, shred it. I said, why did you send it to the university archives? <laughs> so um, there are these kinds of uh, issues. Uh, all our systems at the university, I don't know how it is on your various campuses, but um, there's a mix of professional and personal information in file structures, and that makes it very difficult for individuals to transfer the contents of their, 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 their own computers uh, without you know, massive sorting and arranging and, and so forth, and often that's, that's uh, uh, never done. So uh, there is the uh, problem that people feel that uh, official material that's on their own laptops essentially is their own. So we have a challenge at universities generally about the managing, the creation, use, and retention of born digital information. There's a problem setting up policies uh, about ownership, file systems, retention, and, and, and system uh, design. We um, uh, are, 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 are uh, uh, you, having to, to manage storage and retrieval in various layers. Our university has just um, uh, signed a contract with Google and there's all this issue of moving stuff into the cloud, or what should go into the cloud, what shouldn't go into the cloud, if it stays, how should it be stored, what kind of uh, security and barriers do we have or need to have around uh, this material. Uh, there's a great deal of question about uh, the nature of the, how much should be saved, do we save it all, the, the, the uh, uh, challenge of ensuring security, preservation, migration. These are university-wide, uh, very large IT issues. So from my uh, perspective, the university archives is no longer, uh, the university no longer just uh, collect. Uh, rather, they need to manage digital content from the point of creation through to the point of inactivity and placement in secure storage. The university archives now needs to be totally integrated into the information flow on campus through the entire records cycle. So is the university archives then a special collection or is it something more? Uh, some people say yes, other people say yes, uh, but. For many uh, university libraries, the university archives is a set of historical documents, the accumulation of paper records, and presented as a subset of rare book and manuscript collections. It's rooted in pre-21st century methodologies. But some university libraries are moving much more aggressively in the area of university archives. And to do that means 
connecting directly to I, university IT, to really conforming uh, or to work to, to, to guide content. University IT people, I find, are very content ignorant um, in terms of the, the relative value. And what the university archives has is uh, you know, decades, if not centuries, of experience on the, the content of records production in the campus over time, and, and on the campus over time, and how that records production has morphed into what used to be on paper to which now is in, in digital form. So the, the, uh, there is, a, is a, a, a natural kind of, of, of symbiosis between what the university archives does and has done and what university IT is doing and, and must do uh, to, to, to uh, move, move uh, information systems forward. Secondly, it means connecting directly to university legal counsel. Um, I've had more meetings with the University Legal Council in the last year and a half than I had in 42 years at the University of Michigan. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, these are really hot issues. And um, uh, what the University Archives does informs uh, a certain kind of, introduces a new kind of value added uh, to, to, to records that, that uh, formerly had not really been much uh, considered. Archives uh, need to work more uh, aggressively and, and directly in setting policies for retention and storage. Uh, I think uh, in our university has been uh, remarkably lax in any kind of central uh, retention uh, policy. Uh, it has been pretty much uh, uh, at, at the discretion of the dean or, or executive officer. So uh, these uh, policies now in the digital environment have to be a little bit stronger and uh, better articulated. And the archives is at the table uh, in that discussion. Uh, the, uh, another challenge is making arrangements for secured storage. Uh, storage has proved to be a very interesting problem for the archives in that uh, we have to pay for digital storage. It's not just a matter of putting it in stacks or finding closets or whatever. It's, it's a budgetary consideration. And the layers of security compound the, the, the kind of expenses involved in, in, in secure, securing storage. Another thing is that we found that um, we are increasingly brought into conversations with others who are concerned on campus with the imperatives of the National Science Foundation on big data management. Uh, that the solutions to big data management are in many ways the solutions also to some of the issues that arrive in the, arise at the university archives. It's just uh, particularly in special collections environment, that kind of link isn't obvious, but, but it, it, it is there. So the... Uh, I, I, what I'm arguing today is that I think the, it, it, it is worth your while if the library is interested in, in engaging the University of Michigan mission more uh, uh, strongly uh, to consider a, a reconceptualization of what it means to have university archives in special collections. Uh, it means integrating the library function uh, I mean, if you do pursue this, you are, and one of the advantages of, of pursuing this is that you are making all parts of the university aware of what the library does. Uh, all the schools and colleges in the campus have archives. All the schools and colleges are generating information. All the executive officers, all the major directors are ge generating uh, information that, need to, that needs to be managed. And the question is, is this something that the archives can do uh, is this something that the library can do, that is something that the li where the library will be at the table in solving the, the issues that arise on the complexity of, of, of managing this kind of material. It uh, uh, integrates the library function, integrates the library uh, into institutional information flow and in information preservation. I think it, 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 it moves the library from being a unit to the side that has uh, databases and, and books and, and, and scholarly information. It moves the library into the central discussions on the campus about institutional information flow, and I think that, that, that changes the perception of what the library relationship is to the uh, administrative structure of the campus as a whole. Also, it establishes the library as a center for institutional memory. 
Uh, one of the problems that uh, we find with increased personnel changes, movements, is that um, the universities need to rethink what institutional memory is, how to capture it, how to preserve it, and how to be sure that it is an administrative asset uh, as, as the institution moves forward. Library can assist uh, in doing that. Finally, uh, in uh, rethinking the archives in this way, uh, it opens the possibility of bringing the library to the table, uh, and I'm sure many of you are in many ways, uh, in sharing the university investment in, in IT. So I think my message here, as far as the archives goes, is that it's important to rethink the importance of the university archives as central to the new environment of information flow and retention on the campus. And I think the subtext here is I'm not sure that can be effectively done if the university archives administratively is buried, if I pardon the term, uh, buried uh, as, a, as a subsection of, of special collections. Uh, and that uh, is something I think to, to think about. A second thing I wanted to point out is uh, I think uh, it, uh, and this uh, builds, builds on what uh, both Tim and Lisa were saying, is that uh, we need to rethink special collections as a whole in this changing educational environment. Uh, as Tim was saying, we have to move uh, from a sense of what we have to an understanding of collections as a source of intellectual authority on the campus. Special collections are an assemblage, in my view, of voices that can instruct. We've spent decades, if not centuries, accumulating the papers of this, that, and the other organization of individual, and embedded in those papers are voices. They're people's voices that can tell us something about, uh, uh, the, um, about politics, about values, about uh, aspirations, about success, about failure. I mean, that's why we have them. They're there because they, they, they tell us something. They, they, they have, they, 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 are, they are voices that have the power to instruct. So in my view, the, the exposure to powerful voices embedded in special collections can be as useful and as impactful as exposure to powerful voices in the classroom. The, the collections uh, have that kind of intellectual authority. So we need to shift from the idea of special collections, which is materials-based, to an idea of special collections that is idea-based. And this fits with newer ideas of education where students are encouraged less to gain information and more to experience uh, uh, the processes by which information is accumulated and known. Uh, it's uh, to, to, to uh, uh, have, have students come into special collections, hear those voices, sort through these ideas, and come out with their own uh, 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 set of, 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 of ideas. Uh, so from this perspective, um, there are many ways to think about it. Number one, um, the library itself is a special collection. Uh, I walk through our science library, the way our campus is configured, you have to walk through the science library to get from the main library to the school, old school of information. And, um, for many years I was struck, you know, this isn't a science library at all. This is a history of science library. I mean, these are journals from the 1880s on up through the 1990s uh, 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 and um, print publications that now really have use as a special collection. They are, they are a history of science library. Also from this uh, perspective, um, the uh, special collections are a place for uncovering knowledge and moving from uh, fixed descriptive systems. Spe uh, uh, special collections are wonderful places for exploration. And I think uh, bringing students in, I think both as Tim and Lisa have, have, have shown, uh, bringing students into spe uh, special collections opens up uh, new ideas and, and, and new worlds. So it's a place for understanding information as well as a place for understanding uh, ideas. So we need to move away from, I think, the material focus on special collections and see them not only in, in terms of their intellectual possibilities, but to see special collections as an intellectual center on our campuses that are the equivalent of the faculties uh, that, that are often uh, so, so celebrated. So this leads me to my grand vision. Uh, I would like to think that special collections could emerge 
uh, as an intellectual center on the campus where collections themselves are the intellectual authorities in ways that faculty are authorities in other departments. That is that the voices that we, we, we really uh, emphasize the voices embedded in our collections and see the intellectual possibilities of exposing those voices uh, to our students. Uh, one way to do this uh, might be to, to establish in uh, academic libraries divisions of academic programs where the, where the library itself has a set of academic programs. This goes beyond serving, servicing other academic programs, but having academic programs that are intrinsic to the library uh, itself. The uh, voices of the collections would be the principal intellectual argument for these programs. Faculty within the library or outside the library would work with these voices in courses designed to experience the creation and evaluation of knowledge. This would build uh, on the, some of you know, the CLEAR initiative that brought PhD students into the libraries. And I was really, when I was on the board there, very excited about this program to, to, to get this kind of intellectual component embedded into our library organization. And, and I, I think we uh, did great in, in getting these, these students into the libraries. Where the program fell short, I think, was that libraries didn't reorganize a little bit in order to, to, to develop the particular academic strength of these individuals uh, within, within the library structures. I think um, this, these, the, the, it would have been great if, if out of these, these uh, positions could have come uh, the idea of, of academic programs intrinsic to the library itself. But the, the idea of establishing these academic programs in libraries moves collections from the material to, to the idea of an intellectual resource uh, that, that, that celebrates the voices of intellectual uh, authority uh, in, in our collections. Uh, also, uh, I think uh, doing this leverages the university investment in library and special collections. Uh, what's interesting about libraries and special collections is that their value increases over time. It's a cumulative process. More collections are added. Uh, the, the, the particular strengths of the collections are deepened. And, and therefore, the, the possibilities and power of these holdings increase over time. So I think all of us who've been working with this for so long are at the point where the value of this can be uh, further, further leveraged. I think uh, it, uh, this, this kind of uh, program would expose students to information issues posed by university archives as well as by the special collections. And finally, and most important, um, it would establish uh, the library as a full partner in the academic mission of the university and away from the notion of a service unit. Now we've tried at Michigan to, to achieve this vision in various ways. We have appointed within the Bentley staff a uh, director of academic programs that develops uh, programs uh, a, a, a along this, this regard. Uh, for a while, and this has been a hard sell, and I keep pushing it, uh, for a while, we actually had a lecturer appointed in the university, uh, in the Bentley Library, uh, in conjunction with, his, with the history department, whose course offerings were derived from the, from the holdings of the library itself. But uh, that person moved on, and the funding uh, package kind of fell apart. Uh, we did get a Mellon grant uh, several years ago to experiment with this idea uh, across campus called Teaching with Collections, and uh, it, it was successful, but again, difficult to institutionalize. Uh, I'm now trying to sell this, as, as, as many uh, as we all are, uh, as a development possibility, uh, as a way for donors to transform their a a idea of what, what, the, what special collections can be. Uh, and it's a big ticket item, but um, uh, I think sometimes uh, having a big ticket item to, to display uh, is, is, is useful. So um, those are uh, some of the things I think about when I think about where, where we're going. Uh, I think uh, by uh, um, rethinking special collections, uh, including the university archives, perhaps we will move beyond a question of how our collections, how our archives serve the university and, and engage a recognition that these things that we hold, these, these collections that we have are essential to what the university of the 21st century uh, is becoming. So thank you. <laughs>